<clears throat> That's a sign that we're ready to go, Patrick. Uh, just about. And we are live. Okay. This is the meeting of the Board of Park Commissioners for Tuesday, July 7th. Please call the roll. Mr. Caffrey. Here. Mrs. Westfall. Here. Mr. Emmerich. Here. All members are present. Okay. We have our meeting minutes of our June 2nd meeting. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to those minutes? None. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve those minutes then. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second, second that. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? They stand approved. Jeremy had reported to me earlier that he was going to be out of town in an appointment over in Columbus, so he wouldn't be available, but he did have his report attached to the, the, the package. Uh, if you have any questions concerning the matters in the report, uh, please give Jeremy a call uh, since he's not here. Is Mr. Seiler in the room? If not. Okay. And uh, Mr. Boer, I see you back there. I'm here. Add to your report, sir. Um, not too much to add. We continue to be uh, really, really busy, uh, which is a good thing. Um, I uh, checked up on uh, today, you know, as far as whether or not we've kind of been waiting as we get closer to August. We have some, uh, supposed to have some uh, events uh, that involve, you know, larger groups and, and shotgun starts. And, and the state actually put out a, a memo today that, that shotgun uh, starts uh, would, would be allowed uh, as of today. So uh, that was uh, some good news, uh, but you know, we just have to uh, maintain social distance within those events. So it'll just be kind of figuring out the logistics of, uh, you know, if we have maybe one or two groups that like that would that eat afterwards. So may have to do some combination of indoor and outdoor seating uh, to make sure we space people properly. But, um, but uh, you know, other than that, um, and we still have you know, most of our most of our measures in place, and uh, things are things are going very well. Have you had any problem with social distancing in the rest? No, no, we, we really haven't. You know, uh, you know, with uh, like I said, we we have the ability to let people ride together if they want to. Um, some people choose to do that. Some people don't. A lot of that depends on your probably your individual social situation and who you're playing with, and and also maybe your your risk factors uh, from a personal standpoint. But um, no, I mean, with, with the way we have things, uh, you know, set up on property, um, it's, it really has not been an issue for us. Okay, good. Any questions of Mr. Brewer? Okay. No. Uh, planning commission report. It's basically going to be a mirror image of what we're going to take on next in our new business section. So why don't we just go down to the new business item, item number one, the accepting of fees in lieu of dedicated park land. For, uh, from uh, Redwood uh, Residential Plan Development. Does staff have a report? Uh, yes, we do, thank you. I'm uh, filling in for Robert today. He couldn't uh, make it to this meeting, uh, so he asked me to fill in. Um, essentially, the city received an application. This is for a new private apartment complex. Um, it's 22.5 acres uh, located between McCaig Road and State Route 718. Um, it did go through the Planning Commission um, at the last meeting and the planning commission recommended uh, accepting fees in lieu of instead of open space. Uh, there's kind of been, I think, some confusion at the planning commission level between open space and green space from the application. So essentially the zoning code and the plan development requires 10% of open space for plan developments. Um, this one did not provide any, uh, instead was doing fees in lieu of, which is $500 per, uh, per structure. And they had uh, 26 structures so it'd be a $13,000, which would go into the park and recreational capital budget. Um, the subdivision regulations, uh, which we also take a look at to try and follow, um, obviously if you don't uh, provide open space does require the fees in lieu of. And so we're asking for acceptance of the $13,000 proposed fees in lieu of um, for this development. Okay, any questions of staff? I just want to explain the action on planning commission. It was adopted by planning commission subject to the approval of the park board and accepting fees in lieu as opposed to uh, the real estate. Um, the, the only negative vote was mine. <laughs> and I just want to take the opportunity to explain the vote. When I got the staff report, uh, the staff report indicated uh, that 
and I'll just read it here. Uh, the proposed development has not met the open space requirement for a planned development as described in the ordinance. Um, as Tim said, open space is not green space. Uh, open space is that space. Um, it's, it's defined in the ordinance as being able to be used for um, other than basic stormwater management tools that's readily accessible available to and usable by all the residents of the PD for uh, recreation, so to speak. So uh, I didn't see that in this drawing and it seems pretty dense. I said no to it as a representative of the park board because I believe that the park board is, is uh, supposed to be looking out for our citizens in uh, quality of life experiences and putting buildings too close together is not the quality of life that I I'm, I'm, uh, believe that we should be looking at. These are my opinions, not your guys' opinions and you're welcome to your own opinion on it. But I just wanted to explain my position on the planning commission as to how I voted. Uh, that being said, do you guys have any questions? And I apologize, Susan. I keep saying guys. I know you're a gal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Is there a park space close to that development? Um, currently, there is not park space close. I think the closest park space would be Concord School. Um, the schools did purchase the lot to the west of this. Um, of course, the levy. Uh, did not pass, but the intent is that they will eventually build a school there, which will have a playground, uh, which I said would be uh, right adjacent to this in the future. And the other point is that the fees and loose are $13,000. Um, I think 10, 12, 15 years ago when we bought playground equipment out of Westbrook Park, that playground equipment itself cost us $50,000. So the $13,000 is just kind of a drop in a bucket. Um, this is a private subdivision. So if we said that uh, we want the 10% open space, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's gonna be a public park in there. They just have to put the buildings farther and, or added some additional amenities. So, but good question, Susan. Jordan, do you have anything? I just saw in the, by the drawing, it looks like there's a, a pond out there. Is there a walkway or anything around the pond at all? Or Well, you see in that drawing, there is a little white area. There's a gazebo mm -hmm. and a little white walkway. Uh, mm -hmm. The pond is part of the stormwater management, uh, and that can't be taken into consideration in the calculation of that 10%. I, I did speak with the Redwood individuals before the meeting today, um, and they're actually on, uh, on this call. Uh, if they are called upon, uh, but they indicated to me they'd be willing to put a path around the pond if that would uh, suffice the park board. In addition to paying the fees in lieu of. Walkways are nice, don't get me wrong. I like walkways, but this is a private development. The streets are walkways. I mean, when, I, when I'm out there walking with my wife, we walk on the sidewalks and streets all the time for exercise, but uh, I see where they're coming from. Is this a development for families? It's not a oh, retirement it's, development? As it was explained to us at Planning Commission, this development was gonna be rental properties, uh, okay. not purchase properties. So okay. uh, I imagine it'd be, uh, no, it's not a retirement home sort of. Thing. Okay. I, I do believe in the packet it says they do appeal to older residents and empty nesters uh, who want to stay in the community. I think that's their target audience. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Okay. Okay, um, park board want to take any action on this matter. Um, I, I, just real quick, I mean, I, I have no I would have no issues with with moving forward and accepting fees in lieu of, especially if they're going to do that that walkway around the pond. If we can make that a contingent offer, um, I think it's a you know it's it, it's a it's a nice concession um, and does provide some uh, you know some type of recreation to those those residents. So, do you want to make a motion to that effect? I, I will. So, uh, <laughs> I guess I will make a motion to. Uh, uh, accept uh, the planning commission's uh, com planning commission's positive recommendation for accepting fees in lieu of for the parkland pending um, 
the addition of a, a walkway around the uh, the uh, proposed pond. Is that it's a mouthful? That sounds good to me. <laughs> I think and Sue, I, you can. I, I would second that. Okay, there's a motion second. Any further discussion? You please call the roll. Westfall? Yes. Mr. Emery? Yes. Mr. Cappers? I'll say no. So that's adopted. So thank you very much. Um, next, we have a review for declaring a surplus the following based in, on the approved policy guidelines, Waco Park and that parcel lot on Governor's Road. Um, Patrick, can you give us a status report on what the uh, status of the Waco Park surplus sale might be? was held in abeyance until after the policy was adopted. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. This has already gone through you. Uh, right. The, uh, the, we can actually get it on the next agenda, can't we? With uh, for, the, policy, for the committee. Policy. Okay. So uh, we had held this one up. Uh, actually, the council had held it up um, before it went to committees because we were in the midst of uh, reconciling the Archer Park concerns and everybody has accepted the uh, the process now that we have in place. And so uh, we can put this on for council consideration. Next Monday night, they will have their committee meeting uh, where the committee can uh, make a recommendation to the council. Great, good. And then what's the status of the... Hold on, hold on a second, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I can't hear you. <laughs> she hasn't said anything yet. Uh, my question is, Mr. Mark on Waco Park needs to uh, follow the policy and try to provide a recommendation based on that. We have the policy in the pack? Yes. Okay, so... Um, let me backtrack on that. So you've got two, two A and B on your agenda. Um, one is a uh, request for Waco Park, uh, which was a request that the park board pushed forward. It was not a resident request. Correct. Uh, so uh, the, uh, Mrs. Knight is correct. The council did want that reviewed consistent with the policy it may not change your recommendation, but they kind of wanted it to make sure that that what you want to do with Waco Park is consistent with the policy that, uh, that we passed uh, that the council and you both passed uh, with regards to uh, declaring surplus. Now that we have those written down. And then the, uh, the second one is a brand new one that you haven't seen yet. And that's the one at 700 uh, Governor's Road. Uh, parcel of, uh, of Archer Park as well. Okay, well, let's deal with the Waco Park one in order to follow the uh, policy. We had uh, reviewed this as a group, I believe, last summer when we did our tour of parks. Did we not, Susan and Jordan? Look the Waco I, Park. I, I honestly don't remember looking at Waco. Oh, okay. We've definitely checked out in the last couple of years, but I, I don't remember as a group going last year. Yeah, okay. I don't think I did. Well, if, if you will recall your visit to Waco then, if it was an independent visit, um, it, it's an open area with some playground equipment. I didn't see any encroachments uh, on that playground uh, or the park structures that, that I could perceive without the aid of, of a surveyor. Um, going down through the policy, uh, I think we made a decision that um, the, the property um, had economic benefits to the park. Basically, nobody used it, okay? Yeah. Uh, maintaining it, nobody was using it, and we didn't think it would be wise to keep it in inventory any longer. It's mm -hmm. actually building lots, and if we can sell the, the property, we can generate enough money maybe to play, pay for some playground equipment in some, some other yeah. of our other parks. So sure. that, was, that was the basis then for our uh, requesting that it be placed in surplus property. Um, Patrick, does all this need to be put in writing or is a copy of our minutes sufficient for uh, city council purposes? I would think if minutes would be okay. We can write something up, but that's fine. Okay. Well, the, I think the appropriate city department is park board. Number two, 
confirmation that the city city staff or park board uh, went out to review the fact that there wasn't an encroachment. I just indicated that when I looked at it last time, I didn't see anything. Um, uh, I think that was it. Is that sufficient, Patrick? Well, you're you're uh, you're indicating that the economic benefits of selling the property outweigh the uh, retaining it, and that yeah, it, it is a small small lot. Uh, that is correct. And I, I guess the only thing, uh, the other thing to put on the record would be that, um, and I have not been out there recently, but I'm assuming there are no encroachments on Waco Park. Well, that's what I was just saying. I, when I reviewed it last time I was out there, I didn't see any. There's no buildings uh, really adjacent to it or sheds or anything like that that I'm aware of. No, no you didn't see any. Yeah. And Salome didn't, and Michael did not see any either. So. Good. Okay. All right, good. Uh, so is that sufficient, you think? I think so. Yeah. We don't need another so, motion, do we? No, just that you, no, your motion. We will, we will report to the committee that the uh, park board reviewed it and in light of the uh, policy and continues to recommend this be declared surplus. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next matter is the, uh, this, the governor's road property. This report. We, uh, you should in your packet have received a letter. It was dated back in March, March 3rd. Um, uh, we held it uh, because, again, we were we were addressing the uh, the other Archer uh, uh, issue, uh, and so we wanted to get that resolved before we took it to the council or to the park board, and then ultimately to the council. Uh, this is related to uh, again a property that is currently Archer Park. It is behind 700 Governors. Um, the request for, is from the resident or the property owner there. Uh, they, I guess we've drawn the, uh, a triangle to kind of square off and not really encroach on the 736 property. Reason for the request is that uh, there is a, a part of a shed that is encroaching onto uh, Archer Park. Uh, that, for the record, uh, was not created by the and built by the current property owner at 700. Uh, that was apparently built prior to them purchasing and moving into the property. Um, so it was not an encroachment that they they created. Okay. Okay. Going through our policy once again. Uh, uh, Susan and Jordan, step in here if, if you want to comment. I see the uh, small triangular piece of being in a benefit to our Archer Park property. Uh, it's an area of the park that is not used and probably would never be used. Um, and the, the money that we would get out of this, once again, it would be fair market value, plus the homeowner would pay for all the expenses of the advertising, uh, the surveying costs and things like that. So we wouldn't be out of pocket. And yet at the same time, we can add this money then to our coffers or the enhancement of our additional parks. So I don't see any reason for that, for us not selling it uh, to this gal or whoever else might want to bid at it at the sale. Um, that, that's my thought. What are your thoughts? I agree. I have no problem with it. Yeah, I don't see any issues. And the only, the only thing is, is Patrick, I don't know if this, you know, rendering or image that we were provided does this suffice as far as viewing the property knowing that there's already a a structure out there i mean can we say we viewed it based yeah, off yeah. of this drawing or not or does it need to be a in-person yeah. visit yeah jordan's question goes to the uh, policy where it says that city staff or park board members would go out and uh, view the property we have an aerial photo uh, we've got a photos from Salome's uh, efforts, I believe, in here. Mm -hmm. uh, then we also have uh, the map. Do we need to take a personal visit? City, city staff did, in fact, view the encroachment. We did, and we did take pictures. I'm sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> we did 
visit the uh, property and the parkland and we took pictures yes. and you have one picture on the PowerPoint slide. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I don't think this falls within a, an agrarious, egregious, egregious excuse me, <laughs> encroachment. So uh, I, I, I would say that it's okay, um, but is it take a uh, stab at making a motion to that effect, declaring it surplus property. Yeah, I, I can make a motion and declaring it surplus property. And I'll second that. There's a motion a second, if I may interpret the motion, it's to declare it surplus property with the, under the policy guidelines with the new, uh, with the purchaser of the property paying for all survey expenses and advertising expenses as well as fair market value. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Emmerich? Yes. Mr. Cappers? Yes. Mrs. Westfall? Yes. Approved. Okay. Uh, next, we have the presentation regarding encroachments on the park property. Uh, staff have a report. Yeah, I'm going to go to a shared screen so everybody can see oh, the great. PowerPoint. Not done this before, so everybody seeing the screen? It shows nothing. Yes. Yes. But before you start, let me ask you this. There's going to be a column in your Excel spreadsheet dealing with the measurement in feet or inches. Was this provided as kind of a guesstimate? Was a surveyor involved? Give us some background, please. So, uh, sure. Um, we did the survey with the um, assistance of Neil Tiford. He's a, he works in engineering department, and he's also a certified sur surveyor. So we Great. first, uh, he brought his tools with him, which is uh, one was uh, to locate property pins and the other one was a measure, measuring wheel. And then we used, um, we, he located pins and then we used measuring wheel to measure the distance. Some of the distance because of the grass and uh, trees, we could not really measure it properly. So some of the, some of the measurements are estimates and we also used the map aerial map, okay. but they are close to be the precise numbers. The, the, the encroachments that you're reporting, Yes. It, you did confirm that though with the surveyor that they are Yes, we went to each park there. with Neil Tiford. Michael and I, we were, uh, we were accompanied with Neil Tiford and he was confirming and he was the one locating property pins. Right, Al. Uh, yes. I don't know if you know Neil. Neil is a engineering tech who works for the city. He is also a certified surveyor. Oh yeah, I've used Neil in, in yeah. the past. I, I have no problem with that. I just was wondering whether or not the encroachments were actually um, shown by a surveyor as opposed to using the aerial map. And what you're telling me is the encroachments that you reported were uh, reviewed by the surveyor. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. First, I'll state purpose and process um, of the survey, and then I'll move to encroachments and then recommended next steps. And at the end of the presentation, please ask if you have any questions. The purpose of the survey was to identify encroachments on a parkland per Mayor Oda's request. As I already explained, we, we went to the parks with uh, Neil Tiford, who's a certified surveyor, and um, then we compiled the list of the encroachments and you have uh, in packet you received the Excel spreadsheet where you have a list of each encroachment measurements and uh, details. I, I see the list of city Troy parks. Uh, did you also go out and survey the rest of the city of Troy properties? We went to each park. How about the city of Troy properties, the fire department, uh, the police station, things like that? We did not. We only went to parks. On this, on this slide, you see the list of the parks, which includes a uh, North Market Bowl Fields and Lincoln Community Center's playground area. And the next slide shows the, how, the, how the parks are distributed throughout the city. And encroachments were identified in five parks of the city of Troy, Archer, Edgewater, Haywood, Kensington, and King's Chapel. Cool. Uh, four parks are City of Troy property, and one park par parcel is uh, owned by Park Board. Archer Park. 
first encroachment in 288 Shaftesbury Road. You see shed and trailer on the pictures. Shed is encroaching by two feet and trailer is encroaching by three feet. Just for the information of the other two park board members, back when we created Archer Park, you'll see the vegetation on the left-hand side. That's also a little mounding. Uh, we put that in there for the purpose of, of giving those neighbors some uh, boundary to the play, play services that were on the other side of that, uh, the soccer fields and things like that, and to keep the balls out of their backyard. So uh, this is the area that uh, I would assume that we mow uh, that uh, is, is beyond, it's still park property, but you're seeing a uh, shed, trailer, and that, that wood area there. So. Okay, but it's not used for any park purpose, correct? No, that's correct. Okay. And on this slide, you just see the aerial image of the property and encroachments. 724 Shaftesbury Road, um, approximately 280 <clears throat> square feet unattended garden. Grass sod is removed and looks like it's been not used for a while. And it's, it, is it is ages into the property line. Yes. Yeah, I didn't jump. This is 700 Governors Road. Shed is encroaching by 2.75 feet on park property. And that's the one we just declared surplus. Yes. Correct. Edgewater Park. So next slide will show the pictures of the tree houses. We'll locate it inside the Edgewater, Edgewater Parkland. You see three, three tree houses. And we will be working with the city staff to remove those at the, uh, for safety reasons. Just, just for information to the other park board members, uh, that Edgewater Park land has never been developed into a park, continues to be uh, a forested acreage. Uh, when we took that into inventory some time ago, we were trying to plan for the future possibility of a development coming in directly west of this property into, into residential so that we would be able to add their land to this parcel and get a larger park uh, on that. Um, I've been approached by some builders about the possibility of purchasing that track. Um, there would be four or five, maybe six different building lots with a lot of mature trees on it. So it might be attractive, but uh, if you ever want to consider that, let us know. Go ahead, Solomon. This slide shows you the, where approximately three houses were located inside the wooded area of the park. Next one is 1124 Arbor Lane. Fire pit and stones are 14 feet from property line and shed is encroaching one to uh, 1.5 feet. And they also had landscaping stones, which are not uh, shown here, but behind where Michael is standing, there are landscaping stones laid out horizontally. Is that fence area an encroachment? No, oh. this is on the other property. Okay. These are actually two different pictures. Yes, those are two different pictures. So gotcha. the uh, shed is at the one um, edge of the property and the uh, fire bit is on the other side of the property. Gotcha. And this shows where the shed is and where the fire bit is. Gotcha. And next one will be 1136 Arbor Lane. Um, shed is encroaching uh, two feet. Trailer was uh, trailer is on the right side on the on the slide. It was a uh, park ten feet from property line. They also have uh, plants and decorative fences. One part of decorative fence is encroaching by six feet, eight feet, and the other fence is entirely on the parkland. And they also have landscaping stones. Next one is on 1148 Arbor Lane. Trailer is um, parked exactly 
ages into property line. So basically, the uh, wheel of the trailer is at the uh, edge of the property line. Yes. And then fire pit is 1.5 feet uh, from the property line. And this, this, yes, this is the aerial showing the code joints. 2854 Emberwood Drive. Uh, this is the one we couldn't really measure well because I couldn't take the picture also uh, because of the trees and that's why it's taken like that. But we, we were able to measure the distance from uh, um, of the encroachment, it was four feet. But where this uh, orange ribbon is, that's where the property pin was. And you see the encroachment on the map. Haywood Park and Haywood Park, 1021 20, McCaig Avenue, uh, six by 40 feet fence is uh, encroaching on a parkland. They also have trees and yard decorations inside the encroaching fence. And you'll, you'll see the encroachment of this aerial map. Next one is 1025 McCaig Avenue, driveway is on a parkland. I want to mention something about that. We've known of that encroachment for quite a while. Uh, that encroachment's been there for years, and we really the, the prior, I don't know if it's the same owner or not, uh, but the prior owner knew that we knew about it, and we didn't say anything because that was just another access point for us. Okay. Kensington Park at Kensington Park, twenty six twenty three Huntington Drive. Place that is a. Uh, encroaching by four feet on parkland. And you still see the encroachment on the map. Next one is in King's Chapel, 22.5 by 24 feet fence is encroaching on a parkland. This is the land owned by park board. And they also have yard decorations inside the encroaching fence. And our ne recommended next steps are to draft letters for removal, removal or notification of encroachment. We included two draft letters, which we um, drafted with the law, law director's help. One letter is notice of encroachment, and we are, we are not requiring property owners to remove encroachments immediately. But city, um, City can ask for, for removal encroachments in the future if it seems necessary. And the other letter is the notice of and uh, request of removal. And cities give, we are giving them 30 days uh, to remove the encroachments. And if part board agrees uh, with the letters, we are asking you to rec recommend to council to approve the letters as the Four parklands are owned by the city, and then if Park Board would like to send a letter to King's Chapel, well, property owner at King's Chapel Drive to remove the encroaching fence. Do you have any questions or comments? And and we're asking them to remove the sheds. Yes. But we are not asking them to remove gardens, plants, and driveway, but we are asking them to remove shed, fences, trailers, fire pits. And as I said, it, in, at Edgewater Parkland, tree houses will be removed by city staff. There is no way for us to identify who built the tree houses, and there's no way to know when those tree houses were built. Mm -hmm. As I said, uh, for safety reasons, they have to be removed. They are poorly built structures. So the park board is not picking who gets a letter and who gets to remove. The city is doing that. We is that, are that those are our recommendations. Okay. As I, identify, I indicated on a spreadsheet, those are our recommendations. The ordinance established by the Board of Park Commissioners indicates that it's the park board that is responsible for uh, maintaining, 
the park property. So I would imagine it would be incumbent upon us if we want the encroachments moved um, to go ahead and adopt a resolution, perhaps indicating that letters should be sent out to these encroachments. Uh, and if you want to lay it on city council, we can say subject to city council approval because these people uh, and the city council members are the ones that get voted in the office. So okay. uh, <laughs> we can do that if you want. Sure. I am presenting our findings. So thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate your work. And we did not include outside help as it was requested. It was done by city staff no overtime so if any, do you have any other questions well just i know just it was mentioned a few times so no one no one else was included included in the survey process well i just have another comment uh i appreciate the uh, inventory of park properties I, I think it would be incumbent upon us to also take the other city properties to see if there's any encroachments uh the wastewater treatment plant uh, uh fire stations etc uh, just to make sure our hands are clean on those other ones too. Sure. We can double check that, Al. Um, we we have been pretty conscientious about that. Um, not aware of any, but we can. We've got a staff meeting tomorrow, so I can ask tomorrow. Okay. Um, let's discuss the letters and whether or not we want to recommend it to be sent out. I don't see any problem with it. The ones that are encroaching four to 10 feet, that's like they kind of disregarded the lot lines entirely. Mm -hmm. You want us to go back? We can go back to look at each one of these. Well, you know, the, the real issues are the ones that are over by, you know, two feet or thereabouts. It's like that, that's a very small encroachment. And um, I have, I, I'll, no disrespect to Neil and, and the staff, but even surveyors guesses uh, as to the location of lot lines can differ. Um, may, maybe two feet is a large amount to, to you guys, but you know, talk about it. Well, I think all the information we were able to obtain. Good, Susan. I was just gonna say if it is prohibiting park accessibility or something like that, I can see insisting that that get moved if it's two feet or under, but if it isn't, then I think that other letter is appropriate because if and when we need it moved, then they'll have to move it. We can send out the letter notifying them of the perceived encroachment and then decide not to send out the letter requiring them to remove it for anything over two feet. If you know, that, that's an alternative. Yeah, I, I kind of like that approach, um, at least notifying, documenting the encroachment, especially if it's a fire pit or a garden. I think that that can be easily moved. My, my issue or my concern is the shed or the fence. You know, um, can people do that in 30 days? Is now the time with everything going on to, to, to kind of, you know, fight that battle? Or, you know, could maybe the, the discussion be, Hey, you have 30 days to, you know, get in touch with the park department and develop a plan or, you know, um, you know, a, a plan or an agreement for, you know, if the park department needs this territory moving forward and we inventory that. I just, I just would feel a little bad asking people to move a shed that has maybe been there for eight years in the middle of a, uh, a COVID outbreak right now. You know, I just, I just don't know if the timing feels right, but I think the notification is is absolutely appropriate. And uh, as long as they're developing a plan of action, it's, you know, in my opinion, I'm, I'm okay with it as long as they're working with Jeremy or, or Patrick on, on coming up with a solution. Well, why don't, why don't we do this? Uh, I like that idea. Uh, why don't we send out the notification of encroachment to all those people on Salome's list, except for the 700 uh, Governor's Road, which we've declared a surplus. We don't have to send them a notification. Um, they notified us. so. Um, send out that notification to everybody. And in that letter, um, as far as your draft letter, Solomon, in that letter, we'll ask them to respond to uh, you or Patrick or somebody so that they can go, we can know who's, who's responded and who hasn't. And then um, at the next meeting, we can go ahead and take a look at all of those over two feet 
and determine whether or not we want to send a further letter out uh, telling them that they're going to have 30 or 60 days to, to remove the encroachment. How's that sound? I would agree with that. What's the benefit of doing that, Al, uh, rather than changing the 30 days to 90 days? Nothing magic, uh, Jordan, there's nothing magic about the 30 days. That was just a placeholder. So, you know, however, we, we frequently work with uh, property maintenance issues in particular, where we might say, you've got X amount of time, they call us and say, you know, I, I'll do it, but it's gonna take me twice that long. Can I have more time? So we're not stuck on 30 days. We're not stuck on anything, whatever you're comfortable with. Could be by the end of the season. It's really just to put them on official notice and so they can start the process of looking into, into doing whatever you want them to do. And, and in some cases, again, like that, uh, the, the former garden, uh, unless you really want to see uh, grass seed planted in the middle of July, we just want them to know that, hey, we know about the encroachment. We're not concerned about it. But at some point, you need to be, you need to have noticed that it's our land and we may need to use it for something else. Um, and, and I don't think anybody's arguing with you, Patrick. Okay. But yeah. well, I guess what I'm confused about is why the two-step process, Al? Oh, I think, uh, I think everybody receives a notification that there's encroachment then we need to make a determination as if we're gonna tell them to remove the encroachment, whether or not we wanna draw a line in the sand on this two foot issue, or is there a minimal encroachment that we can live with? That, that's the two-step process. And you wanna do, you wanna make that decision next meeting, not this meeting? Well, I no, thought that we could see what kind of responses we would receive from the- What's the consequence if they don't do anything? Uh, well, depending on, on which letter you send, uh, if they don't do anything, uh, we can always go in and, and remove it for them. Okay. That would be the hammer, if you would. Okay. Because that one I, that we want to wield, but. Right. I'd like to see you remove two foot of an eight foot shed. And leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And six foot alone. We say removal, yeah. it could just be moval. <laughs> just scoot it back. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I mean, and I'll. Uh, I'm sorry, no. No, I, 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 Patrick, I think we're I think we're aligned. I mean, we're I, I'm 100% supportive of the notification. Let's get it on record. Let's get it out there. I think we're. I th I'm speaking for you out here a little bit, but I think where you're going with that is we're kind of interested to see what the reaction is. You know, if the reaction is, hey man, you know, I can I can move this, but it's going to take me, you know, August until I have X resources to do so. Um, I think that's kind of what we're thinking about, Al, is what the reaction is from the. Sure. From, yeah. from the people receiving mm -hmm. the letters. So is that a motion, Jordan? Uh, <laughs> or I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll make that motion. Okay. Send a notification letter out to uh, all those listed on uh, Solomon's list except for 700 Governor's Road. I'll second okay. that. <laughs> Any further discussion? Uh, yes, just one question for clarification. So you actually yes, want... Uh, I guess a third letter that's just send, just telling them you've got an encroachment, talk to us about it. And that, that would be the one that goes out, yes. Okay, so it's neither of the ones that are included in your packet because those are more specific. Yeah, if, the, if they're talking about removal, we don't want that letter to go out now. It's only a notification, hey, hey, we see you out there, okay, talk to us. <laughs> The second letter seemed to have that effect, though, because it basically said, we see you at some point, we may ask you to remove it. So, I mean, to me, that seems sufficient. Yeah, yeah. That's, except that's for the second paragraph, because the second paragraph says we will not require immediate removal, but reserves the right. We're not ready to say yeah. that yet until next meeting to see what kind of response we get first. Well, I think no. that statement's okay. Yeah, yeah I'm okay with that statement. The yeah. second letter, even the one, even the property, even the encroachments that are significant. If if they're insignificant, it still <clears throat> reserves with us the right to go ahead and have them remove it 
if we determine that we want to. I mean, it still gives us the uh, ability to decide in the future after their response. Right, because they may say, oh, I need to move that. I didn't realize it was that far over. And right. we don't have, to have a heavy hand about it. I do have one question. So planning and zoning has a setback requirements for sheds and team, team confirms the shed should be placed. Yeah, the, we have requirements. They have to be five feet from the rear of the property so uh, from all accessory structures. Well, then you better put that in the letter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It won't you're be not only encroaching on our park property, but you're also encroaching on the, the setback line requirement. So it won't be just removing yeah. two feet. It will be more than right. two feet. So you have to tweak feet. the letter, yes. Yeah. So let me let me suggest a one word change in that second letter. Instead of it saying the city will not require immediate removal, we'll say may not require immediate removal. Gives us a little more flexibility. And yeah. then <laughs> in, instead of getting that specific about sheds versus fences versus whatever, uh, when they talk to us, when they call us in, we can talk about the specific issue and what it would take for them to comply because a shed would be five feet, a fence be could on be property. on the property line, it could be a couple of feet off the property line depending on drainage. So that's why we try to be flexible and, and talk individually with everybody. So we sounds like one. And yeah, I think, I think that sounds great. I, we would like you to contact us to discuss the specifics. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, please call the roll. Mr. Cappers. Yes. Mrs. Westfall. Yes. Mr. Emery. Yes. Approved. Great. Uh, we also note that we received another check from the uh, William Mayer Successor Trust in the amount of $1,336.89. And if he were around, I would thank him for his donation but uh, he's not around, but we put it in minutes that we accepted it. Uh, next thing we have, we've got our tour of parks coming up. Um, because of the COVID situation, we had always in the past uh, taken a look at our large parks in mass. All four of us would get in a truck and we'd go take a look at them. And that was a real good discussion point, but I think for this year, uh, we may want to separately uh, go ahead and, and view those larger parks ourselves independently. And then uh, at our next meeting, we'll go ahead and talk about the improvements to uh, the individual parks that we tour. And then the, the president will go ahead and get out a list of, of uh, locations for your, your touring pleasure sometime within the next three weeks. How's that sound? Okay. Sounds fair. Anything else you want to discuss? Okay, no. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thanks. Thanks.